Heston Blumenthal, Britain's most visionary chef, is on a mission impossible. I am horrified at some of the slop that passes off as food and is served up in British institutions up and down the country. Now Heston will be using his magic to tackle the problems defeating some of Britain's top industrial chefs. Oh, I want them to rip up their recipe books and approach food and eating in a completely new way. Whether it's 30,000 feet in the sky... Okay, we've got two more trays, okay. please. We're off. We're off. We're off. Go in. Excuse me. We would not have time to do this on board the aircraft. Or 20,000 leagues under the sea. We've got £2.34 per man per day. Less than prison. He'll face unique logistical difficulties and stubborn cooks who don't like change. It's our way or no way. Tonight, Heston's taking on Britain's cinema food. I've had enough of people buying popcorn. It's outrageous that people should have to put up with dull, tasteless and totally overpriced food when they go to the cinema. 35 60 What? Now can Heston work some magic on Britain's biggest cinema chain? He'll have to come up with radical new ideas. There we have my uh, edible sperm shake. Teach the staff to cook. It's not how it looks, it's how it tastes. Am I right? Well, not really. The <laughs> look does have something to do with it as well. And persuade the bosses to look beyond their profits. <coughs> Doesn't work for me. <laughs> Just thinking of the refunds. Can Heston Blumenthal put the magic back into cinema? You want an honest answer? Yeah. yeah. I think we have a problem with it. Heston Blumenthal is about to embark on his latest mission. He wants to use his revolutionary cooking methods to overhaul the food at British cinemas. I still find cinema as exciting today as I did when I was going to Saturday morning pictures as a kid. Fantastic. But why is the food dull? Why is the food not moved up to become as exciting as today's films are? This is a fantastic opportunity for me to make that difference. In its heyday, cinema didn't just show the latest picture, it provided a magical day out for the whole family. Now we have to put up with soulless foyers and an industry where overpriced food is standard. It's just, there's no taste, it's very bland. Really, really expensive. It just doesn't taste right. So I prefer to get it from outside and pull it in my bag and just bring it in. Now Cineworld, Britain's largest cinema chain, has agreed to let Heston try and put some magic back into cinema. Uh, am I expecting him to be able to deliver? I'm, I'm sceptical. If he accomplishes it, it'd be phenomenal. But it is a huge challenge. When did you cure these? More used to working with an army of gourmet chefs, Heston will now depend on Cineworld staff to help him. Are they interested in cooking? Do they even like food? These sort of things are really important questions, because if you've got food being prepared by people that aren't interested in food, how are you going to do anything that's half decent with your ingredients? With 100,000 customers to feed per day, no chefs on the staff and a corporation with a firm eye on profits, it looks like a mission impossible. Heston starts with a trip down memory lane. I've come to the London Film Museum, basically to remind myself how exciting cinema used to be. And walking around here, seeing the memorabilia, it's brought back some fantastic childhood memories. In the good old days, we went to the cinema for the whole social gathering, the whole experience, and we've lost that. Today, we go to the cinema just to watch the film. And I've got to find a way to put that excitement back into the whole cinema experience. Heston and his development chefs, Jockey and Stefan, are on their way to Cineworld at High Wycombe. Quite exciting. Heston will be using this cinema as a test bed for his new ideas, but first he wants to find out what cinema goers eat. Let's yeah. try, uh, we'll try some different things. Maybe get his, let's order something noisy as well. Okay. Let's go for something really noisy. <laughs> Watching from the sidelines, manager Matt Fishwick isn't too keen on his venue being used. I've definitely got mixed feelings on Heston being here. I, there were a number of things 
that could go wrong. Clash of the Titans in 3D, please. At the end of the day, he'll leave, and we are left with whatever he comes up with. <laughs> but if it's just not manageable, um, then that's just going to be a disaster. Look the size of this. The foyer staff also have their doubts. If he changes too much, that might sort of aggravate a few of the staff. The restaurant business and this business are different business. I don't know, if he starts with something like snail porridge, I just don't know how I'm going to be selling that. You can't, I don't know, would you like some snail porridge? Can we have um, a popcorn? You want to go for large popcorn? Go small. small. This is small, so if you like go like medium, that'd be better. It's like is that 355. And for only 45 Three fifty five for that? Yeah. Tell you what, we're in the wrong business. Well, if you want to go for large... <laughs> How much yeah. is large? 440. That medium's good, thanks. You sure? Yeah. We'll try a hot dog. Hot dog, yeah? yeah. Medium or large, sir? <laughs> medium, please. Large, yeah? <laughs> no. 40p extra, large, yeah, better. <laughs> Persuading customers to buy larger portions is one of the ways Cineworld makes millions in profits. Has he got batteries in him? Is someone round him up and turn a button and go, right, sell, sell, sell? What we'd ideally like is for every customer to be at least buying one combo. That's what you want. So you're looking at six quidish, and he's bought more than just one combo, he's bought two combos and an ice cream. There we go. That's the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a hose pipe. But yeah, he's a good customer. 35.60. What? But let's be fair, if he's a good seller. Oh, yeah. I hope you enjoy the movie. Thank you so much, yeah? Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you. It's been great. Laden with food they would never normally eat, Heston and his team tuck in. Oh, God, that's fucking hot. Hot dog them out. And they are swarmed with Oh, no, that's, um, that's a really bad hot dog. What struck me about the food was not only was it drab and totally unexciting, but the whole place felt completely anonymous. It was like sitting in an airport terminal. I'm sure cinemas never used to be like this. The whole experience at High Wycombe has left Heston with a bad taste in his mouth. I need to find out what the bosses want. Are they up for something new and exciting? Or are they afraid to change? Hi. Steve Wiener. Hi, Hessen. Nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Steve Wiener founded Cineworld 15 years ago, and Crispin Lilly is the company's head of retail. I've been in the business now a little over 40 years, yeah. and we're still basically selling the same products year after year. And we've done lots of experimentation over the years with different products, and we haven't come up with anything that really has grabbed the public's attention. Um, quite a lot of stuff over the years written about the profit margins with popcorn. Yes. We all know how great, that, how great they are. So. Well, they are very good. There's no use denying that. Mm. I mean, if, if you can come up with something that suddenly every person is buying in addition to, then, you know, we, we would look at it at whatever margin, as long as it was positive. So in summary, you guys would like me to, to come up with something that could, could possibly challenge popcorn, yeah. brought some real excitement to the, the whole eating experience, that everybody would love and obviously made a profit. For a man who has the most successful restaurant in this country, this is not a big challenge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that the cinema world has not achieved this in 40 years <laughs> has nothing to do with it. No. Immaterial. <laughs> I'm a bit confused, to be honest. It just feels like it just says, come on, Hessen, just make, make something magic, make us a lot of money, make it real easy to do and revolutionise the cinema. My field of expertise is not making food as profitable as possible. If that's what they want, I think they need to find somebody else. Heston Blumenthal has a mission impossible. For 40 years, Cineworld cinema chain has been trying to devise new food ideas. They've challenged Heston to come up with something incredible they can roll out across the UK. Now I've been set the challenge, I kind of need to see what I've got to work with. So... <laughs> I'm going to do a bit of a session behind the counter here. Having tasted standard cinema snacks, Heston's worried that Cineworld is more interested in profit than quality food. How are you doing? Hi, Matt. Nice to meet you. Look. Manager Matt Fishwick, who's been a manager here for three years, is unconvinced Heston can help. In a restaurant setting, you can create a niche for yourself, and which he has done massively well, and then that's brilliant. But 
to come into something that's been so established for so so many years and to try and change it I think he's got a real tough job in his hands so this is Melissa she's one of the suits How are you? nice to meet you Heston is introduced to Cineworld staff Melissa, Shahid and Ifti, who served him before. See you again. OK, the okay. first thing, we get the shirt tucked in. Yeah, I've wondered if you'd pick up on that, actually. Heston hopes to find out what he's up against by doing a shift behind the counter. Mr Heston, we never mention small. We mention medium large. If you smile to customers, they want to talk to you even more, and that's the key. Once you've got them confident, so yeah. you're talking to each other, yeah. that's when you start yeah. pushing. So it's all encouraging people to, yeah. like you did yesterday, yeah, that's it. try to get me to buy a garage full of stuff. <laughs> Heston soon discovers that popcorn is the hub of the business. It's like a big mouth spewing out popcorn. And it's easy money. Typically, the corn in a large bag costs cinemas less than a penny, but sells for up to £4.50. You, what, you can see why cinemas like popcorn. This container full of unpopped corn fills this whole bag. If I could get a 20 course tasting menu all based on popcorn, financially I'd be laughing. Manager Matt has corporate rules for everything, even the way cups are handed over. Thank you very much. So I'm giving you the cinema sign mm. as on the drink. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you very much. So either so like that exactly, yeah. or exactly. like that. that. Never. That way. Because I can't see anything. Right. So it's got to be either or. Okay. If you just follow me behind concession. Out of Matt's earshot, Shahid offers a word of warning. The manager, Matt, who's in charge of retail, you just don't want to see the bad side of him, so you just got to keep away. Good? It's not good. Not good at all. Time for Heston to try his hand as a salesman. Yeah, what can I do for you? Hiya. How are you Hi. doing? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the new boy, it's my first day. Yeah, very good. Lots to learn. OK, sweet popcorn and a Coke. Yes, please. Straight regular Coke. Yes, please. And what size would you like? Um, Four for large. <laughs> Fantastic. With Matt hovering over Heston's every move, it's not long before he's in trouble for splitting a bag. Uh, OK, if, if you were the customer, would you be happy with this popcorn? Would you actually eat me? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry I'm sure about the delay. I do apologise on Heston's behalf. He's training, but he's learning very slowly. <laughs> sorry, very much. There's me trying to remember the prior pence difference between a small and medium and a large popcorn and a Coke, but I didn't think about the combo or upselling all the time. It's all just sell, sell, sell. There doesn't seem to be any magic in this food experience. So you're getting in there, yeah? Heston's shift is over, but manager Matt has a few concerns. One thing I noticed when, when you were there, there was a steady, long queue building up. Yeah. And that's just our worst nightmare. And then there's the damage issue, because I did see when you were serving some of the popcorn bags were ripped. Oh, and two bags, two bags know, of popcorn and two goes. I know, but it, it, they all mm. cost the money, so... Yeah. Today's a Wednesday. I've counted every single popcorn bag today. Yeah. I, I really read somewhere really that the popcorn bags cost more than the popcorn. Yeah. All together. So, so the waste. I, I, it would, actually, it would have been better me taking, dropping a dropping whole bag, bag of popcorn on the floor yeah. and keeping the bag. You're right. It's one of those things that we mm. we try and keep it really tight. Yeah. Horrified by Matt's penny pinching, Heston decides to take a closer look at their number one bestseller, popcorn. He wants to find out why so many of us buy this expensive cardboard snack. I've got to come up with something new, but before I do that, I need to find out what is it that makes popcorn so popular. First, Heston decides to test the sugar levels in cinema popcorn. People crave sugar and fat, and maybe this is why popcorn is so popular. There you go. Yeah. Well, we already started there. You feel like a little prick. <laughs> <laughs> Just one bowl of the stuff has doubled Jockey's blood sugar level. 8.8. .8. So how much sugar and fat does a cinema goer consume? They decide to work out the calories. OK, so... And what's the daily amount? A man. That's 1,300. Heston's horrified to discover that one large bag can contain two-thirds of a woman's entire daily calorie allowance. That's a lot, no? Well, it is if you had your Coca-Cola, if you had your fizzy drink, 
to it. These products aren't just fattening. Eating this stuff in excess could contribute to diabetes and heart disease. Like a lot of people, when I go to the cinema, I always choose popcorn. But why is that? Now, I've got an idea that I want to put to the test. Heston suspects people love popcorn only because of a learned association with the cinema. To test this out, he serves popcorn to Matt's staff and some regular cinema girls while they watch a movie. What they don't know is that this popcorn is stale. He then serves the same group fresh popcorn, but away from the big screen. You just feel like pigeon's food or you know, something like <laughs> fruity bird or something. It just tasted it odd. I thought popcorn was really nice. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, but I think I'd enjoy it more in the screening room because there's an atmosphere to it. You feel that, that you, you, you're creating a surrounding around the popcorn, whereas in here it's, it's, it's a bit kind of dull. Just as Heston suspected, when asked to score the two types, they unanimously prefer the stale popcorn served in the cinema. To me, this just shows how strong the association between popcorn and cinema actually is. You can eat substandard quality popcorn in the cinema and find it more pleasurable than eating popcorn as it should be outside of the cinema. Heston's test has shown that if he's to succeed in breaking the public's addiction to popcorn, he'll have to come up with something really revolutionary. Back at his restaurant in Bray, Heston decides the secret lies in thinking completely out of the box. For me, the most exciting thing about eating is that it involves all the senses that we try and bring in all of the sensory triggers to make the whole experience that much more exciting. So I was thinking, why can't we use smell and taste, as well as the visual and the sound element from a film, to create the first 4D cinematic experience? Heston's big idea is to use smells and tastes specifically tailored to the film being watched. To explore this, they watch cult movie Perfume. You can imagine what the hair smells like and then a skin. Using scents concocted by world-famous perfumier Christophe Ludemiel, they sniff along to the action on screen. The smell brings the film to life. Quite incredible. Yes, definitely. They brainstorm for tastes that will enhance the key scenes. They'll use these to demonstrate the idea to Cineworld bosses. So what food can we do with this? Soft, creamy, but also you need some acidity because of the fruity note from the plums. Mm -hmm. Armed with a box of cleverly devised smells and tastes, Hester must now convince Cineworld bosses that multi-sensory 4D cinema is the future. Sure, you know, they said to me, sky's the limit. I think this is exactly what they're going to want. Matt and his team have no clue what's in store. In my mind, I want something simple and easy and appetising for customers. That's, that's the whole point of what we do. If you go to something wacky and difficult to make, looks kind of cool, but just doesn't hold customer base for a long time, it's just not going to work. What do you think he's going to make us eat? Be worried. <laughs> nah, we'll be bad. It's got to be good. <laughs> The film opens in a fish market, so Heston's giving them a chicken liver paste with a foul-smelling anchovy sauce. Spoon. Heston adds a fishy smell into the auditorium. OK. Get eat away. Just <laughs> thinking of the refunds. Well, that was 
a, that was a great reaction. Exactly what I'd hoped for. Repulsed. In contrast, the next scene features a newborn baby. OK, guys, here's the next one. It's rice pudding with the pistachio oil crystallised pistachios. Heston's hoping his sweet, milky rice pudding, together with a scent evoking a newborn baby, will have a very different effect. Yeah, it's much better than before, for sure. It's tiny. While the staff enjoy their baby food, Heston prepares his most controversial offering to go with the movie's climax, the orgy scene. Empty this stuff out. This is a pineapple gel mixed with coconut milk. I don't really know what to call it, because I don't think it's ever been served before. There we have my uh, edible sperm shake. This should be fun. What do you think it is this time? It's got like, such a coconut. Yeah, I was going to say kind of some nutty taste to it. Heston sprays a sperm-like smell over the heads of the bosses. Kind of citrus taste to it. So is Heston's radical 4D idea the start of a cinema food revolution? Well, I can't help. That was an experience and a half. Yeah. The smell of it, it felt like puking up. Imagine making it. Oh, yeah. that's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. It was an experience I probably won't ever forget, but I just don't really see how that's going to work. Will Heston have any more success with the bosses? They say they're ambitious. They say, yeah, go for it. We really all need to push the boundaries. They really mean it? I'm going to find that now. All right, guys, what do you think? Do you want an honest answer? Yeah, yeah. I think we have a problem with it. Where it was so foul, and with the smell there, it just, like, let me out of here. <laughs> it was the feeling I had. That was also the point. That I know it was the point. It yeah. pulls but you into the film and makes you... I know. ...comes that much more emotional. It was just a little bit too much realism with that one, I think. <laughs> just in terms of get, getting people to actually take the taste at exactly the right moment, getting the product to the people at the right time and just mass producing that. I just can't see it working on the mass market. But I think if you get this right, this could be the future of cinema. You could make films so much more kind of emotionally stimulating. It's so powerful. And you did say, we want you to think of the sky's the limit, basically come up with something, push the boundaries. We're ready for it. If we were grading you, you got an A on pushing the boundaries, but you did fail in coming up with something that we could put out to the entire masses. Heston, it's just too elaborate. It's not cost efficient for us to make, and it'd be very difficult for our staff to produce it, you know, on a regular daily basis. That's the problem with it. I was so excited about presenting that whole idea to these guys just the powerful effects that smelling and eating while watching a film can have and take cinema to a whole new dimension. But, you know, for them it was just not viable, it was too expensive, um, too complicated. Yeah, it was exciting, but it was, you know, it's just too, it's just too difficult. That was really disappointing. Heston Blumenthal is on a mission to come up with a new cinema snack which will win over the public and the Cineworld bosses. He needs to come up with something that will stop people buying unhealthy popcorn out of habit and is popular enough to be rolled out across the chain. I've realised that I can't wean people off popcorn. So what I've got to do is come up with some healthy options with intense popcorn flavours that will actually beat popcorn at its own game. Popcorn itself is not unhealthy. It's just the added sugar and fat in cinema popcorn that makes it so calorific. 
So if Heston can use pure corn kernels to create new healthy popcorn products, he may be onto a winner. <laughs> I have no idea what this man is doing right now. <laughs> He's just gone insane. He's filling a condom with popped corn. I can see this. I can see Cineworld really going for this one. <laughs> We've had some strange things in this lab. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> with his trademark wizardry, Heston conjures up a popcorn ice cream with far less calories than a large bag of cinema popcorn. That's nice, that, actually. I like that. Milkshake, we need to get the milk. The milk. And a popcorn milkshake with an ingenious twist a vanilla straw. If you want to reduce sugar in a food, you can add some vanilla, which will make up for, not all, but make up for some of the sugar that you've lost. So it'll make the food more healthy. In a few months, Heston will unveil his creations at a big launch. But before that, he's been given a trial shift. How will the public respond to his new, healthier popcorn products? In High Wycombe, manager Matt is ready for battle. I'm a, an emotional person, and if he really does cross some boundaries, then I will just say, you've crossed, you've crossed the line. We're a business at the end of the day, and I, I feel that where we are in a business in my retail area, we're doing well. But I, if it just ruins things, I will tell him. With Matt's staff apprehensive too, Heston invites them to sample his popcorn milkshake. For a lot longer. Right. Mm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> You're gonna fall on the floor. You're on the floor. <laughs> I, I hate to say it. I don't like that. Not quite the reaction Heston was hoping for. If my ice cream and milkshake don't succeed, then I think my adventure at Cineworld is going to come to an embarrassing end. Hi, Good afternoon. Will the punters go for traditional unhealthy popcorn or Heston's tastier and healthier alternatives? Hi. How can I help uh, you? Can I get a medium saucy popcorn and a large Diet Coke and... Popcorn, like, come on. Just Maltesers, please. Can we interest you in popcorn ice cream? Pop nope. Popcorn milkshake? Yeah, no, large cup. And a scoop of fish. You sure you're doing popcorn ice cream? Quite sure, thanks. Yeah. Could it interest you in some popcorn ice cream or a popcorn milkshake? Serve with a vanilla straw? That sounds absolutely vile. Oh, so no. Really? <laughs> no, thank you. Vile? Well, I've never had that. After an hour, not a single serving of Heston's ice cream or milkshake has been sold. <laughs> popcorn sales are roaring as usual. There's only one thing left to do now, and that is ban popcorn. What's he doing? He's got tape, and it looks like he's taping up the warmers. I've had enough of people buying popcorn. Are you really angry? I'm not angry, I'm just getting even. Oh my god. Have you seen what he's doing? Well, that is. It's just time to stop the popcorn. That's it. No popcorn. What's what's going on? So I'm guessing you want people not to eat popcorn, and by doing that, you think it will do that. You, you think it will, you'll be able to. Cinema, cinema and popcorn, popcorn. Yeah. go together. Yeah. So when you come into a cinema... I know that, that, I know that, but we've got to do something so to stop people buying popcorn, popcorn and buying ice the ice cream. Ice cream can't beat popcorn. Do you know what, if you just got a customer here, try our popcorn ice cream. Uh, no, it's not going to taste right. Yeah, yeah, you could more. cover this up in black, and I bet you they still want popcorn. Yeah. Matt's so sure Heston's products won't sell, he even agrees to the popcorn ban. Will the customers now buy Heston's creations? Um, one large salted popcorn. Oh, sorry, there's no popcorn today. No it's popcorn been... today. Oh. And what's wrong with that popcorn there, then? It's not good. 
We have popcorn ice cream or we have a popcorn milkshake with a vanilla straw. So I'm not happy, yes. I mean, you have it there, but he's I mean, obviously not serving us. It couldn't be long term. We can't do a ban on popcorn. I mean, it's, it's a tradition, it's cinema. With popcorn banned, Heston's products are suddenly flavour of the day. Have a milkshake. What do you think? That's well good. Mm. It's got a kind of weird sweet taste, but it actually does taste quite nice. <laughs> Do you like the ice cream? Yeah. Rather than having that, should just pop them. Yeah? Yeah? The punters love Heston's new product, but Matt's not beaten yet. Oh, hello. Oh. Come in. <laughs> Thank you. Popcorn's markup, profit margin is just incredible, and that ice cream's markup, profit margin would be minimal. I just want to show you something on. These, these are what my stock counts I do every, every Wednesday. This week I lost £83 worth of ice cream, and that was from staff over-scooping. OK, so they, they scoop too much weight of yeah. ice cream. Popcorn, I was up. I was up money. I was up on pop my popcorn. So it's got to be easy to produce mm -hmm. en masse, easy to, and quick to serve. It's got to be cheap enough to make the profits that you, you, you already make on popcorn. It's an, impo it's an impossible task. Unconvinced that Heston's products are good for business, the staff unwind in the pub. He had to stop us selling popcorn to sell his product. And if you have to do that, I'm sorry, you're not onto a winner. Tesco's would say no to you straight away. It's just that novelty at the beginning. I said, Heston, look, ice cream and your milkshake is to business for making money is rubbish. He'll argue that it's a beautifully crafted vanilla ice cream. Yeah, I couldn't care less. I will tell you not to sell his product okay. because the products we already buy will probably have a higher profit margin. Okay. Unaware of the pub talk behind his back, Heston heads back to Bray. Buoyed up by the success of his ice cream and milkshake, the challenge now is how to keep the public buying them. Could the answer lie in the foyer? I still remember the first time going up those escalators to City World. It's this big, dull space. Felt like an airport lounge. When film was first shown in this country, it was at a fairground. So why not turn the dull foyer into a fairground? How much? Excited by this idea, Heston and his team explore giving a mischievous fairground twist to other cinema food classics. Is when we poach it, so you've got to get a really nice, delicate, textured hot dog. Hot dogs have always been a cinema staple, but can the ketchup and mustard go inside the sausage? Try it, but I'm sure it will come out. Yeah, look, it's started to come out, so you need to roll that round. Yeah. Uh, that's not going to work, is it? <laughs> Candy floss is a fairground favourite, so Heston explores a playful, savoury version. You see if we can make chicken flavoured candy cloth. He settles on smoked apple flavour topped with pistachio nuts. Yes, it's all cool. <laughs> Ice cream again, but this time a Willy Wonka style treat. It tastes of banana but has a chewy marshmallow texture. Yeah, it's really called marshmallow, isn't it? Really mm, chewy, yeah. yeah. Heston is to succeed in turning the sterile cinema foyer into a fairground, he'll need the cinema staff to buy into the idea. So he's persuaded a doubtful Itzy, Shahid and Melissa to come to Bray. Hello. Hi, guys. How are you doing? He wants to win them round by getting them to think of fun versions of the snack they know best. So we've got three small popcorn machines. Okay. There's some corn. So we're going to give you half an hour... Yeah. Just to have a little play around, see what you can do with popcorn. How's that sound? Yeah. What do you think? I'm putting custard, yeah. drinking chocolate and popcorn together. Oh, oh yeah, this is I like it. <laughs> no. I'm happy with what I got. Okay, time's up. Judgment time. <laughs> That's certainly the most radical version of popcorn okay. that I've tasted. Thank you. Thank you so um, much. 
the mixture, yeah. the blend of spices in there, either has been done by complete and utter fluke and luck, <laughs> or by somebody that's got a really good touch with spices and knows how to use them. Mine's chocolate heaven. Chocolate? <laughs> oh, you've got a name for it. <laughs> that's nice. That doesn't look very good. It's not how it looks, it's how it tastes. Am I right? Well, not really. <laughs> Luke does have something to do with it as well. <laughs> ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah. You might as well have closed your eyes. Close your eyes. And chucked everything <laughs> in. And I think there was a lot of wishful thinking and hoping there that something was going to happen. <laughs> I thought that went really well. The most important thing of all was the fact that they are now completely motivated, they're excited about this, and they're prepared to tackle this challenge. So I've got them on side. Because without them, there's no way we're going to succeed. Finally, it's the day of Heston's big launch at one of Cineworld's grandest central London venues. If it goes well, his ideas could be rolled out across the UK. Along with Itsy's spicy popcorn, Melissa's chocolate heaven, the inside-out hot dogs and chewy ice cream, Heston will be unveiling a few other surprises. Come a long way since the beginning of this challenge. I think we've ended up with something now that is exciting. It's kind of new and vibrant, but at the same time still ticks the boxes that cinema goers want when they go to, to, to watch a film. Heston's success hangs on tonight's reaction from the public and the Cineworld bosses. Heston is just hours away from unveiling his new range of cinema snacks at one of Cineworld's grandest venues. Can I add on to this one here? Just a little bit more. Sure. Make it quite hard. Right. Cineworld staff have been helping him with their own recipe ideas, but they haven't yet seen what he's done to the foyer. Right. Oh, wow. Oh. Through the doors, they step into a magical world inspired by the fairground. Good afternoon. There you go. This is going to be the new Cineworld. So for one portion, two of these, two of those. Heston needs the staff to help make his apple wood smoke candy floss and liquid nitrogen ice cream, but manager Matt doesn't think they'll be up to the job. The stuff that we're already familiar with will go right. It's the strange looking burners and liquid nitrogen and all sorts of different random things that will go wrong. It will, it, it will test us, definitely test us. There's only an hour before the doors will open to customers. There's an element of pressure just because it's a product we've never made before. It needs to be really good. Yeah, it's a bit difficult than I thought. This is what I've ended up with. This, um, it's not right, is it? I oh, know, it's all right, that's fine. OK, and, and, yeah. it's just taking too long, way too long. We're not going to get enough portions served at this rate. I need to sort this out. It's just not, it's not fast enough, it's not, it's just not good enough. Heston's put Ifty in charge of the ice cream. There are four different toppings, each of them fizz and pop in the mouth. It's, it's very complicated. It's a bit confusing, it's a bit dangerous. And he's struggling with the names. Ifty, how are you doing? I'm walking on this. Can you run me through these toppings? So which one do you like? Which yeah, I'd like you to tell me, what's my options? What can I choose, choose from? Uh, let me do this. Oh, one moment, please. This is not good. I'm, I'm a customer, so I'm waiting. Uh, toppings? Which one do you like? Toppings? I don't know what they are. I'd like you to tell me. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> oh, if they... With seven different flavours of popcorn on offer... You can pick and choose. It's like a pick and mix. Shahid thinks it's not just the staff who'll be confused. My argument is, we've got too many flavours. Even with having sweet and salty, you get confusion. Yeah, no, but they're definitely colours, look. Yeah. That's a curry yeah. one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that's the chocolate one. Jockey, yes. mark my words, yeah? When it gets busy out there, I could 100% guarantee you that people will, customers will get the wrong popcorn. With just half an hour to go before opening, Hester needs to take some drastic action. He turns to the one person used to whipping the staff into shape. We have got a big problem. What's some issues? <sighs> he can't remember four of the toppings we've got. There two he could remember, he muddled them up. OK. So he's not got the hang of the 
Can you throw a set? Okay. That is going to take too long, so we're not. We're just not going to get enough. Well, uh, no, I think we can. We need to, to to kind of see who does best things best and put them where they should be. Okay. Time for an emergency reshuffle. Right, we've got very little time left, and we've got some pretty big issues. So, you're on candy floss, which says, yeah. and Matt. I want you to go on the ice cream station. Cool. You're cool with those four toppings, you can remember those? Yeah. Okay. I will have them down. And guys, we've got to be really fast about this. You've got to remember everything. Okay? And you've got to sell. You've got to sell, sell, sell. Up selling. Up selling, motivated. You've got to think about selling as many of these portions as possible. So are you ready for it? Yeah, we are, yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on, show us some energy. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Yeah. man. Finally, the doors are open. It's showtime. Hi, miss. Hi. How are you? We've got a couple of different ice creams. We've got popcorn flavoured ice cream. We've just got some popcorn on top of it, some popping candy. We've also got a marshmallow. It tastes like marshmallow. It looks like marshmallow. And then we've also got rhubarb and custard. Would you like to try the marshmallow? Sounds good. Popcorn for me. This is an inside-out hot dog. Basically, a hot dog where the ketchup and the mustard and the pickle is inside, and it's, it's digging, wrapped into a, a little sausage shape, and it's poached. It is a sensational hot dog with pickles and mustard inside, and an edible Heston napkin, which you're supposed to eat, and it's very nice. Mustard and stuff's all in the sausage. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got the popcorn ice cream, uh, and it's got a, an amazing aftertaste to it, where it kind of keeps popping in your mouth after you've finished finished eating and it just keeps going and it's very different I've never had anything like it in my life all the things are going down really well they're busy I've got a problem with the popcorn though no one I'm so, I, did, I did not expect this to happen no one seems to be getting the popcorn now's the chance for Ifty to really come into his own I need your expertise we've got a king of upsell we've got to do the one that Thing that's not selling Which one? is the one thing I expected to sell. What? Popcorn. Popcorn. Need to sell. You've got to sell that stuff. Okay, sir. Thank, Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Anyone like popcorn, please? I know you're gonna like it. Can you come this side, please? Come this side. Come this side. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks. You're alright, yeah. So which flavor do you like? You want large or medium? Medium. It's only 20 the extra or 30. You okay. get large, better okay. mix, you know, yeah? Heston's creations seem to be going down a storm with the public, but it'll be tougher to convince sceptical Cineworld bosses. Hey, guys, how are you doing? Hey. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> so, again, we're saying that's edible, the paper. There's some goo inside, yeah, ketchup, mustard, and uh, pickle in there as well. <laughs> This is fabulous. It tastes absolutely fabulous. Really? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> absolutely fabulous. No, it really is. Okay. Who would have ever thought popcorn ice cream? It's great. Uh, did you get the space dust on there? Have you got the popping candy on there? I think so. Heston's passed the first hurdle, but will they go for some of his crazier ideas? What type of wood? You're basically smoking the candy. It looks great. The theatre yeah. is fabulous. Yes, this is for you. Hello. You want to try it? Yeah. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Next, menthol and cactus lollipops, which both heat and cool the mouth. Wow. It's a nice taste to it. <laughs> Finally, it's time for the bosses to give Heston their verdict. Will Cineworld roll out his new snacks nationwide? Yeah. It was much better than I thought it could come out. There were quite a few items in there that we really think had, you know, possibilities. But yeah. uh, the top of the list, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> was the In-N-Out hot dog and the uh, popcorn ice cream. The feedback downstairs on the hot dog was so unanimous. I mean, oh, that, yeah, that, that feedback was absolutely super. It was great. You know, when I walked in and saw the environment that you had created, I can actually remember back when we did have lobbies and cinemas that were a lot like that. The excitement starts when they get to the lobby, not when they get into the auditorium. Yeah. yeah it's practicality. I thought you were going to stumble. Just the idea of actually doing so they could actually go out to all 78 cinemas. Yeah. And we've seen a few things there tonight that could. Could. Good. Let's see if we can yeah. make it a will. I agree. Fantastic. 
Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks guys. Time. See you. Okay. See Bye you. now. I think we succeeded in the challenge. I mean, it was really touch and go at times. But more importantly than that, the Sydney World staff, they're right behind it. And without them, this would never have happened. Well, and I think we've shown Stephen and Crispin that there yeah. is yeah, a future out there yeah. for cinema, yeah. a future yeah. that yeah. can bring more excitement back to the cinema experience than existed before. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. Anyway, thanks. Thank yeah. you. So, which flavour do you like? Last. No, last flavour. <laughs> which flavour do you like? <laughs> Next week, Heston's Mission Impossible is to revolutionise the food on the UK's largest airline, British Airways. It doesn't look the most appetising dish in the world. I think it's a fantastic opportunity to really get stuck in to a good bit of scientific research. Look at oh, my absolutely. galley, look at the mess! Oh, right. It's absolute total chaos. Back to the drawing board. This is a Herculean challenge, because if it wasn't, somebody would have done this already. Tomorrow night from nine, can star teachers make star pupils? Jamie's dream school begins. Wonder what the catchment area is like. Now, next night, Mimi's brother turns up, or is it her sister? Hard to tell in Shameless. <laughs>